Hello everybody and welcome back to my second tutorial of PixelFX Designer 2.0. Today I'm gonna talk to you about particles and emitters. Let's go ahead and start a new project. As you can see and as you might remember from my first tutorial, in the top left you have the project tree. Inside the project tree you can see all the particles and emitters you created. If you have never used PixelFX Designer before, you might wonder, what exactly is an emitter? Basically, the emitter defines the area where the particles are being created and also the amount of particles emitted. Within an emitter, you can create and place as many particle groups as you'd like. And when you move the emitter, all its corresponding particles move with it. Now let's see how you would go on about creating particles and emitters. The new version of PixelFX Designer lets you create an unlimited amount of emitters and within it as many particles as you please. Below the project tree you have three creation buttons. Create emitters, create particles and create images. In order to create a new emitter I click on create emitter and as you can see a new emitter appeared in the project tree. I select the emitter and then I click on the canvas to move and drag the emitter around. As you can tell, the new emitter is not emitting any particles. And that is because we have not created any particles within the emitter yet. To create the particles, first I select the emitter within which I want to create them. After that I click on the create particle button below the project tree. The new particle has appeared in the project tree, within the selected emitter. And now the particle animation is visible on the canvas. Let me just quickly move the first emitter to the side. I did that by selecting the emitter and dragging it to where I want it to. Now let me center the second emitter. I can do that by either selecting and dragging the emitter as I already did, or by right clicking on the emitter and then selecting center. This way the emitter is automatically placed in the exact center of the canvas. So, you know how to create particles and emitters. Another cool feature of version 2.0 is that you can move any particle and emitter independently from each other up and down the layer hierarchy. To demonstrate, let me just quickly change the color of the particles. I will explain a little bit more about the particle parameters in just a minute. Now that the two emitters have particles with different colors, it's a little bit easier to see that emitter 1 is layered on top of emitter 2. If you want to display emitter 2 on top of emitter 1, all you need to do is to select emitter 2 in the project tree and drag it above emitter 1. You can see that now emitter 2 is on top of emitter 1. Same as the emitters, you can also drag the particles up and down the layer hierarchy. You can even drag the particle into a different emitter than the one it originated from. If you want to toggle the visibility of a particle or of an entire emitter with all its particle on or off, you can do that by clicking on the eye icon to the right of the object you'd like to toggle in the project tree. If you want to delete a particle or an emitter, you can do so by right-clicking it and selecting delete. Alternatively, you can simply select the item you'd like to delete and press the delete key. A small pop-up window will ask you to either validate or cancel the deletion. Now let's go into a bit more detail about emitters and how to modify them. Once you select an emitter, its parameters appear in the bottom left corner below the project tree, as I've already quickly mentioned. As you can see, there are different settings that you can modify. Amount, chance, width and so on. Let's take a closer look at the width and height parameter. Take a look at the canvas and observe how the emission area width changes once I increase the width of the emitter. I can do the same with the height of the emitter. 
If I increase both width and height of the emitter, I am creating a rectangle area within which the particles are being created. Let's have a look at the amount and delay settings. As you have already understood, the emitter is constantly releasing new particles. With the delay parameter, you can set the interval, how long it takes between each individual release of particles. Right now the delay is set to zero. This means that the emitter is constantly releasing new particles at a very high rate. If I set the delay to one second, the emitter is going to release a new particle only every time a second has passed. If I set the delay to 0.5, every half a second a new particle appears. Now, if I increase the amount parameter of the emitter, it will not release only one particle each emission interval, but the newly specified amount. As you can see, now I'm getting 35 new particles every half a second. If I increase the amount parameter and reduce the emission delay, I get an explosion of particles. To better demonstrate my next point, I will quickly reduce the particle's lifespan and speed. Don't worry if you didn't follow how I did that. I will come back to particle settings in just one second. For now, let's go back to the emitter settings. With the shape parameter, you can change the shape of the emission area. For example, if I select the ellipse shape, the new particles are being spawned only within the elliptic shape. If I choose diamond, only within a diamond shape. And if I choose line, only on a diagonal line. I can change that line's angle by increasing or decreasing the emitter's width and height. Now that that's clear, let me change the shape back to ellipse. You might have noticed the distribution parameter. The distribution parameter allows you to define how many particles are being spawned in the center of your emission area and how many particles are being spawned at the border of your emission area. With the linear distribution, your particles are being spread equally over the entire emission shape. If you choose Gaussian distribution, no particles will be spawned at the border of the emission shape and the more you go into the center of the emission shape, the more particles will be spawned. And likewise, if you choose inverted Gaussian distribution, no particles will be spawned in the center of the emission shape and the more you go to the border of the emission shape, the more particles will be spawned. In the emitter settings, you can also find the movement tab. Within the movement tab, you can add movement to your emission area. For example, if I increase the circle parameter, the emitter starts moving in a circle. If I increase the amount of the parameter, the circle becomes bigger. I can also change the movement speed by increasing or decreasing the time it takes for one full rotation. Likewise, you can add horizontal or vertical movement and also combine those three movement styles. Lastly, you have a contour tab in your emitter. Here you can load an image into the emitter, but only the contours of that image will be shown on top of the emitter. I think that has been enough about emitter settings. Let's move on and talk a little bit about modifying the particles themselves. Once you select a particle, the particle settings appear below the project tree. The particle settings that you can see here are basically exactly the same as PixelFX Designer version 1, so I'm not gonna discuss them in much detail. You can edit the speed, the movement direction, the rotation angle, the width and height size, the scaling, the lifetime, just as you could with the previous version. However, PixelFX Designer 2.0 has a new, very amazing feature. You can add a wiggle effect to the individual parameters. If I add wiggle to the direction, for example, you will see that the particles don't move in a straight line anymore, 
but they start wiggling back and forth. Or if I add a wiggle to the size, the particles will grow and shrink back and forth, which will create this super cool and fun bubbly effect. It's an amazing feature and there's just so much potential to what you can do with it. Next in the settings is the color tab, where you can change the colors just as you could in the previous version. One new feature is that you can pick from three color presets. With one simple click I can add a fire coloring or a magic coloring. Then you have the library tab where you can pick the shape of the particles from a huge library of diverse shapes. You have bloodstained shapes, smoke shapes, star shapes, anything you can think of. And if you want to load your own image as a particle, you can do that in the image tab. All you need to do is to click on load image, search for the image that you want to use, and your image is now a particle. If you want your particles to have the exact same color as the imported image, you can set that in the color tab. All you need to do is to set all three colors to white and to uncheck the additive color box. I'm just quickly going into the project settings to pixelize the animation. Yeah, I guess that looks pretty fun. That has been all for this tutorial. I hope you found it insightful. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. My next tutorial in the series is going to be about images, how to import them and how to use them in your animations. Until then, have a good day.